What's going on, YouTube? Steezy Steez, aka the Rural Racer. Just moved out to this area from the Toronto area, one of the most populated areas in Canada. To Grand Bend, Ontario. And for Americans, people in other parts of Canada don't know what that is. It's a little beach town in the summer. That is fucking the weather. Just picked up uh, EJA Coop from my work. Got a steal of a deal. Things practically mint. That's 174,000 kilometers on it. Roughly equals. Roughly equals about 80,000 miles. The thing is in really good shape, especially for the price I bought it. Unfortunately, it is an automatic. I was going to buy a transmission off a guy and a clutch pedal assembly and convert it to manual. But as I've been thinking more, I've decided to go against that route. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix it up a bit, get it looking good. Main reason, currently, I'm driving an Acura CL Type S. It's pretty low K, 158,000, which is like 70,000 miles. But this thing is a pig on gas. The car I had just before this was a Mustang. That was better on gas than this. This is easily one of the worst cars on gas I've ever had. And uh, currently I'm saving to go to school. I plan on going to truck driving school. And uh, it's going to be an hour commute each way every day. Which will cost me in this car about a tank every two, two and a half days. Which is pretty pricey for a student, if you ask me. So, picking up, picked up the Civic as a little commuter project. I've had many Hondas before. Currently I'm on car 15, and I think nine of them have been Hondas or Acuras. I'd have to sit down and really figure it out. But yeah, today, what I'm hoping on getting done is uh, the wiper blade arms have uh, chipped paint, and I want to sand it down and respray it with some semi-gloss black just to prevent it from rusting especially with winter coming on in Canada for anybody who thinks Canada is like an igloo well it's like December 9th 2016 today very little snow this is the first real snowfall that we've had a couple weeks to Christmas and I still can't make an igloo I'm tired of being homeless <laughs> Anyways, pick this back up when I get home in about another 10 minutes. Maybe a little bit later, I just picked up a poutine. Spicy chicken poutine. What y'all Americans know about fries and cheese curds and gravy? Talk to you soon. Alright, just pulling in at home. There's my baby girl. Thing is in pretty good shape. Literally, after looking it over, that's the only rust on the entire car. Like I said, unfortunately, it was an automatic, or is still an automatic. But the price I paid for it, I really can't complain. The thing is super freaking clean inside. 174,000 kilometers. It's still a baby in Honda terms. Still even has the stock radio. I've never come across a Civic this stock in my life. Need to fix this. And then this. So... These will be upcoming projects that I'll post on my channel. Forgive me if this isn't very good. This is my first attempt at doing YouTube. I'm doing my best. I'm sure I'll figure better things out in time. But yeah. Let's get Project EJ8 going. Might as well introduce you to the Acura. 
needs front bumper paint still, but I'm gonna wait till springtime to do that. It's a clean car, very fun, comfy to drive. It's pretty quick. Fortunately, it's a pig on gas. I was gonna originally work on this, I was gonna slam it, lip kit, and everything, but these aren't exactly the cheapest cars to build. Just the half red, halfway clear taillights, looking at about 500 bucks and another 500 for the black housing headlights. So, instead of building this, driving this through the winter, and working on this through the winter. I was, like I said, gonna do a manual transmission swap, but now I'm just gonna work on getting it a little nicer looking, clean it up. The rear shocks are gone, so instead of putting in OEM shocks, I'm going to buy coilovers, since it's only maybe $150, $200 more than all four shocks. And uh, yeah, once I get this looking good, then I'm going to start looking at picking up a motor, build that over a period of time. I'm either thinking LS VTEC or maybe pick up a Junkyard K and start building that up. Still yet to decide. If I wind up getting any viewers on this, please let me know what you think I should go for. Now mind you, an LS VTEC I'll be able to throw in it a lot quicker. K-Swap will take a little bit longer as they are pricier. So, I'd like your guys' feedback. My uh, main goal for this car is to make it look cool. I'm not trying to build a drag car, but I would like something that looks good and I can take on the circuit track as I only live about 10 minutes away from a racetrack. Alrighty. Guys, just finished eating my poutine. Time to get into the shop. It's nothing special. This will be the resting place for the Civic. Once we figure a spot to put the trailer. It's not a car trailer, but it works. It's my dad's car. It's with his uh, steezy ass wheels for the winter time. Fat cat. Like a mouse. We got a heater in here. Heats the house and the shop. Got the upstairs. Goes up to a pool room where we have a flat screen, couches, pool table. It came with the house. Previous owners didn't want to take it. Don't blame them. It's heavy as shit. Anyways, gonna look for the parts that I need. Gonna need some tape and stuff like that. And we'll pick this back up once I got all the stuff I need. Oh, here's under the hood. It is a Canadian SI. It does look a little dirty as uh, the previous owner, which I am the second one, the first owner, has uh, been getting this car undercoated quite regularly as you can see. Prevent any corrosion. I don't like the look of it, but I like the fact that there's not going to be any rust under here. Especially since you can tell whoever did undercoat it did it quite well. So, any rust that I'll find will be stuff like that, and on some bolts, but the actual metal itself will be pretty good. So, what I did do, before I take the wiper arms off, a little bit of green paint that I had lying around the house from doing painting, I marked where the wiper blades come off, just under the big clips, I'm not sure the name for them, and at least for my car, what you're going to need to do Remove that bolt right there. Sorry for the snow and leaves. So on my car, it's a 14 mil bolt. Yours may be different. Yours might be exposed like this. Yours might be under a cap. Anyways, we will pick this back up once I have both arms off. So I got the arms off. Uh, passenger one came off real easy driver one was giving me a bit of an issue. Now my trick to get it off is it didn't want to come off the stud. So what I was doing was pushing down like this. And eventually it wiggled this up enough that I can pop it off. So what I'm going to be doing next is as you can see the paint's been chipping. Don't worry about having to figure out which one's driver and which one isn't. If you look right there says LDR, which is your left drivers. So, you 
don't really need to be too concerned. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 300 grit, rough up the paint that is on there, and then I'm going to go to a 600 or 8 or possibly one and then the other. So we're going to get this sanded up, prime it, and then on to the semi-gloss black paint. He wants to come outside, but he barks too much. Poor little bear. Anyways, so what I did was I used the 300 grit and then the 600. And what you want to do is where the paint has been chipping, you want to go around the whole arms of the 300 and then the whole arms with the 600, knocking down the hard edge of where the bare steel is exposed. Then you want to take yourself some brake cleaner or some rubbing alcohol, whatever you choose. Wipe it down to get any dust from when you sanded. Then I find something like this is the e easier to hang. So what I did was I grabbed a clothes hanger. Bent it up in the middle here. Got it hanging off a piece of cardboard. Hang it down. And then uh, we can get to priming, let that dry, then painting. Also, while you're at it, if you have exposed nuts, you should all, might as well go ahead and paint them. Always take care of your nuts. It's key is men. After you've gone down and wiped them off, Shake your can of primer real good. All right, she's all shaken up. Now before you start spraying on your actual project at the side, give it a test. Make sure it's coming out nice and good. And now when you go to paint, don't start on the object. Start off like so and sweep across, sweep across, sweep across and doing light dusting coats and uh, I would say do one arm at a time instead of trying to tackle both so you're going to end up wasting a lot of paint in that area that you don't need to and I figure you take it one at a time you'll do a better job. Just like this. Okay, so here we are all primered up. It's about six coats in. Not going to go any more than that. I don't think you have to use an entire spray paint can on something small like this. You really don't. Just until you have real good even color of the primer. Luckily this primer is fairly quick drying. It takes about ten minutes. You only have to wait one minute in between coats. So this is only taking me about 10 minutes, roughly, to uh, prime these up. So now you just got to wait 10 minutes. Go have a smoke, play with the doggos, play some video games if you want to wait a little bit longer. Do whatever you got to do for 10 minutes. Hell, even in that 10 minutes, you can be shaking the shit out of your semi-gloss black, flat black, gloss black, whatever you plan on doing. Even maybe you're doing some rice or shit, like chrome blue or something like that. Anyways, we'll be back once this is dry. Alrighty, so we're back. And all the primer is nice and dry. Sorry for the fingers. Anyways, now what you want to do, shake the fuck out of your can. Once you think you got your can shaken up good enough, do a test, pot, test patch, just like that. And just like the primer, you start off the object and sweep across. Start with light coats, move to heavy after your first coat. Just finished coat number three. Might be a little bit hard to see. But in that time, 
Mind you, I've only been filming about an hour, hour and a half. She's a fucking coming down now, boys. Winter's here. Fuck. If you're anal like me, what I wanted to do is I took it off after it's been drying a little bit. And I'm going to flip it over and get the back side. I know you don't see it, but I got a full can of paint. Might as well. Oh, six coats of primer, six coats of paint. Flipped it around. Got the back sides. And I'm just going to leave it here. Hanging to dry. Come back in about two hours, hopefully before the sun goes down. Throw them back on the car. Now, unfortunately, just noticed that I wasn't thinking, and the tape blew off the car. So, I can't really remember where the wiper blade sat but I'm sure I can go back in these videos get it pretty friggin close anyways gonna let those dry for a bit and we'll come back when I throw them back on the car so I figure while that's drying I might as well get started on my idle air control valve I'm assuming it's pretty dirty so spending 200 bucks I'm just going to clean mine out. Honda can be a bit of a rip-off like that. In the Acura CL, here in Canada, we have daytime running lights. And the module had cracked. If you look real close at the soldering points, the solder was cracked. So, wherever factory they made that in Japan wasn't soldering that rate, they wanted to charge you 200 bucks. I fixed it with the price of a cheap soldering iron and some solder. So, instead of spending 200 bucks on new idle air control valve, Gonna clean the shit out of it with brake clean. Give you a look at why I need to do that. There we go. Battery is a little weak. If you notice though, runs kind of shitty. Idles real high at start, and I'll show you idles a little bit low once it warms up. We'll be right back. car wants to make a liar out of me after it starts warming up it's idling high now but the other day uh, it was idling around 650 700 rpms now I'm at a grand so it's just a little bit low I'm still thinking it's the pressure control valve or air intake control valve sorry so as I'm waiting for everything to dry, I'm going to go ahead and get the idle air control valve off if I can. It's Canada. It's never too cold to have a beer. Cheers, boys. For anyone that will be doing the idle air control valve in their Honda, you are going to want a drain pan. Stick it up in behind the engine right around here because there are coolant lines attached I'm not quite sure why never claim to be an expert just an enthusiast but you don't want to get coolant all over your driveway especially if it isn't your driveway those have come to visit Who's a good boy? Who's a good girl? That's Bear. And this is Bella. 
back to work, buddies. To get your idle air control valve off, you're going to need a 12 millimeter deep socket. Don't need a deep for the two tops, but you definitely do the bottom. Now for the tops, or for these bolts, you have two long bolts that go up in the back here, and one in the bottom corner there, and then you get two nuts. Top right corner, bottom left. And once that's done, go ahead and peel this back. You're going to have to remove these hoses here. Make sure you have a catch can underneath to catch that coolant. So, finally got it all out. As you can see, it's got lots of carbon buildup. Got to take off the idle air control valve, which is this right here from the throttle body, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray brake cleaner on everything because I'm here, I might as well. So I've gone ahead with brake cleaner, got the corrosion off. If you look inside, come on, focus. Right in there, there's a little slit and all that carbon buildup was preventing it from moving easily. So hopefully I'm going to throw it back in and it starts up good. As you'll be able to see I went with the brake cleaner cleaned up all that carbon that was on the throttle there and inside here. Now if you notice that little slit all there the whole piece of metal there that you kind of see moving around a tiny bit it's full of carbon so it really just didn't want to move freely with the throttle and allowing it to idle decently so sprayed the shit out of it with gunk brick clean sorry that's the French side and just kind of used the hose as a pressure washer type deal and just sprayed the shit out of it and getting all the gunk out. Gonna throw it back in and hopefully she runs good. Got the idle air control valve, all the plugs back in. Unfortunately, this piece of shit broke on me. So, I gotta get a new hose clamp. Good thing we're not driving this car, but I'm gonna start it up if it's any better. And then we're gonna throw the wiper arms back on. And we'll be back to see if it idles any better. Here we are guys. Idles where it should be. It's getting kind of dark out. But, I'll show you the windshield wipers. It's going pretty good. Ah, let's hop on outside here. And there they are now. I think they look a lot better than what they used to. They could have been done a little nicer if I really took my time off. They're kind of wet. Looks a little strange on the camera here to me. But they're in. Thanks for watching guys, gotta do plenty more projects, now it's time for the YouTube douche outro.